let's say you have a beam like this okay and you're applied with this load okay and to design this beam let's say you have two section one is circular section with diameter d and a square section with side let's say h okay and in both cases the area is same here your area is h square and here your area is 5 by 4 times d square okay so now what is the best section for this beam or let's say here the moment is m which one is the best section okay so here best section means with respect to your economical point of view okay so to decide which one is the best section again you have to remind one equation that is to find out the stress caused by your moment m we use this formula that is sigma is equal to m y by i or in case of the extreme fiber this y is replaced by either h by 2 in case of rectangular section or by d by 2 in case of a circular section okay and then we can simplify this equation by this one that is m by i by h by 2 or d by 2 whatever it is or m by z and you know that z is your section modulus section modulus well it is clear that more is the section modulus less is the stress okay so for any constant area if we can maximize this section modulus that section will serve us better from economical point of view okay so let's find so for the circular section what is i you know about the neutral axis this i can be written as pi by 64 times d to the power 4 and here y is your d by 2 so z can be written by as pi by 32 times d cube okay and as pi by 4 times d square is the area of the section we can write this by this formula 1 times 8 times 5 by 4 times d square times d if we further simplify this this is 1 by 8 times a d this is the z in case of a circular section similarly for a square section if we find the section modulus first your i is 1 by 12 times h to the power 4 here y is equal to h by 2 this is your neutral axis this is your h by 2 the distance of the extreme fiber from your neutral axis okay and your z is coming as your one sixth of h cube and you know that area is given by this or h square so you can write z as your one sixth area times h okay so in both cases this area is same area is same for both circular and the square section so to compare these two quantities is z for circular section and z for your square section we need to replace either d by h or h by d okay let's do that in both cases area is same for circular section your area is pi by 4 times d square okay and this is equal to your h square clear so we can write h as root over pi by 2 times d as area is same in both cases okay now here simply replace h okay with d so z for your 
square section is coming as one sixth time a times root over pi by two times d okay or root over pi times divided by 12 times a d okay so let's calculate the value of this one pi square root divided by your 12 okay and it is coming as 0 0.147 times d z this is for square section okay and for circular section this is 1 by 8 1 by 8 means it is coming as 1 divided by 8 which is 0 0.125 times a d okay so it is clear that for circular section your z is 0 0.125 times of area times d okay which is in case of square section only 0.147 so simply comparing this two value we can say that z is more compared to your z in case of square section is more compared to your circular section so that's why the problem is solved for this type of problem we will use this square section this is more economical okay so from this equation this equation has a great implication the equation is your stress is equal to m y by i this says that if this is your neutral axis then the stress at the furthest point is maximum okay and minimum at the center or it is zero so this is the stress distribution okay so we always want that for a particular cross-sectional area the material always placed in this in this region okay in that case our z will be maximum or the section can carry the stress more efficiently so this is the basic behind the use of i section okay how well from this stress distribution it is clear that the more material should be put away from this neutral axis okay and this is happen when let's say you have given a cross sectional area a okay and if this is the neutral axis okay so you have given cross sectional area a what you will try well you will try to put half area here and half area here and only that time this idea is executed or maximum material is put on the farthest point compared to this neutral axis okay so this is your a by 2 and this is also a by 2 okay and you have also given that the maximum distance between these two material or lump of material is let's say h okay so from neutral axis the centroid here lies at a distance of h by 2 for this and also for this one this is h by 2 okay you are given a as well as the height of the section okay so obviously to use the material more efficiently considering this stress, di stress distribution you will put them equally on each side of this neutral axis okay so what is the moment of inertia now well about the neutral axis the moment of inertia can be given as a into r square where let's say a dashed into r square a dashed is your a by 2 area of each block and r is the distance from neutral axis to the center of this block that is your h by 2 which gives you a this is the whole square so which give you, gives you a times h square divided by your 8 okay so this is i 
and what is the distance of this material from the neutral axis to calculate the maximum stress so y is here h by 2 simply we can now find the z so z is coming as your i by y or simply a h square by 8 okay we have done a mistake here here we have taken only the moment of inertia for a particular side this uh, this material has also contributed in the moment of inertia so simply multiply this item with 2 and it's 2 times this one so i is a h square by 4 okay so here i is a h square by 4 divided by y y is also h by 2 so your section modulus for maximum use of this cross section is coming as z is equal to cancel 2 with 4 it is 2 so half times a into h okay so if you use your cross section or your material by this method or if you, if you place them this like this you can use them most economically okay but in practical it is not possible to place the material like this okay if this is your neutral axis and you place them equally at a distance of h by 2 from both side it is not possible what you have to do you have to connect these two things okay for that for that thing you simply provide your wave area okay so from your total cross-sectional area certain amount of cross-section a is used for this wave part okay and obviously in, at that time this z is not now 0.5 times a h rather it becomes more or less 0 0.3 times a h okay so if you want to check it you can go to any standard or any standard still stable so for example here take sp6 of indian standard here if we take ismb 600 okay it has sectional area 156 okay so 156.21 it has h this is the h h is your 60 centimeter so times 60 so as per our formula a h times 0.3 should be z okay so 0.3 okay this should be the z value well let's check multiply this with 0.3 you are getting 2811 okay as z 2811 semi cube is the z for ismv 600 about this major axis okay now let's check whether it is correct or not well here i value is given r value is given so in the next page there should be z value so here is the z xx xx means this axis major axis so it is given as 3060 okay so it is given as 3060 so what is the accuracy of our theory so it is 2811 divided by 3060 so it is almost 92 percent accurate clear so this is the basic things behind the design of rolled section okay so you must have designed the built-up section but you never think why the spec specification of any rolled section is such like that this is the basic behind this 
design of rolled section. That's all for now.